Yes, 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 man. What's going on? <clears throat> so let's talk about experts. Now, anybody that's in these fields, don't get butt hurt, okay? I know, you're amazing. Not everyone in your field is, but because we're human beings. And so that's kind of what we're talking about. Some, a lot of, I want to kind of share some mistakes that I made trusting so-called experts. And what you, <clears throat> what I try to keep in mind now is I ask people questions. I, I, you know, if someone's an expert or seems to be very knowledgeable about something that I'm going to ask them questions. But in the back of my mind is something I always keep in mind. And this is something that I say to myself. I wouldn't say it to them is nobody knows shit. Most of the time, the stuff they're telling you, they probably don't even know, or they're just repeating something to you. They were told to say a lot of these people have licenses. Like, let's get into financial advisors. It's not that these are bad people or they don't want you to earn the most money. They just have fiduciary uh, uh, things. They have, re you know, they have legal ramifications. They have things holding them back. So they can't tell you, yeah, you should run out and invest in an oil well. A financial advisor is going to tell you a very box thing to do. You should put your money in an index fund. Don't look at it. Just consistently put money in it. It'll go up. Well, that's true. But you don't need him for that. Now, as you get your net worth grows higher and higher, there are things that financial advisors can do. Uh, it usually more applies to high net worth people. Like some financial advisors will have, uh, you know, partnerships with CPAs and groups, and they're they're specialized in working with high net individual people to try to help structure things like taxes and this and that. When you're first starting out, you're going to come across, and I said funny, I said influencers. We could call them gurus. You're going to come across a litany of gurus on the internet, on YouTube, on Instagram, all this stuff, right? Gurus. You know? People like myself who talk about things. And a lot of times, the information they're pushing is packaged. Like they'll say, um, oh, all real estate should be inside an LLC or inside an S corporation. Why? Why? And they'll say, well, for lawsuits. I never met anybody who was ever sued. I've never met any landlord who was ever sued and lost a property. So, They'll have you, you know, and if you go to a lawyer, did I even have lawyers? I can't even believe I don't have lawyers on here. If you go to a lawyer, the lawyer's gonna tell you the same thing. Oh yeah, you gotta have an LLC. And you gotta you gotta put it in an S corporation. Oh, you're gonna get better tax treatment. So the accountant's gonna tell you, yeah, you need better, that's gonna give you better tax, that better tax things. Maybe, maybe not. Guy makes 55,000 a year, well, he ain't paying no taxes. And when he buys real estate, he ain't gonna pay no taxes. It's tax sheltered. And so if you don't watch out, the financial advisor will tell you, you probably don't want to get in real estate. Your CPA will say, oh, you need to set up a LLC or this and that. You really don't need to. Your lawyer is probably going to tell you that. By the time you pay him, pay him and pay him, you ain't got no money left. And you have all this stuff you really don't need. Why? Well, they have, they have, they have a, a license they got to protect. So they're going to give you the advice that's going to protect you. So if you go to an attorney and you say, what I should do, well, you should lawyer up, man. You should, you should, you know, they're going to tell you all the legal things that you can just spend money on to do. And you may or may not need to do any of that stuff, right? You know, CPA is going to try to give you the, what he thinks will protect you the most. And so a lot of this is kind of like your mom saying, hey, uh, be careful. Don't talk to strangers. And yet all of the money that you want is in the pockets, purses, wallets, checkbooks, credit cards of other people. And so all our life, you've been told since you were little, don't talk to strangers. And yet the money, if you're a salesman or whatever you do, comes from other people. And so you raise kids not to talk to strangers. And then you wonder why they can't go out into the world and make money. You know? So experts, our family falls into that category. You can have family members and friends that are, quote, experts. You know, They know all about this or all about that. A lot of times they're self, which most of us are self-proclaimed experts at something, right? And so we need to take what they're saying and go, hmm. And so the point I'm trying to make is you need to filter all of this information that you're getting from so-called experts. You're not going to know more about counting and taxes than your CPA. You're not going to know more about the law than your lawyer, okay? You're, I think you could easily know more about finances than your financial advisor. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Insurance, insurance agents, they're going to try to over-insure you, right? That's just what insurances do. Banking, 
Bankers are going to try to get you to get all kinds of shit there. Oh yeah, you should get pull out equity on your home. You should do an eight, you know, home equity loan and you should do a HELOC and you should borrow for this and borrow for that. If you let them, they'll have you borrow for everything in your life, right? So we have to keep their expertise understanding that a lot of this expertise benefits their advice. So if you call a tree guy and say, hey, should I cut that tree down? A lot of times he's going to say, yeah. I mean, we hate for it to fall on your house. <laughs> you know, he don't... <laughs> He may or may not even know if that tree needs to be cut down, but he's in the business of cutting down trees. So a lawyer, when you go see him, is in the business of lawyering you up and putting a bunch of legal shit around what your question you're asking. And a CPA is in the business of bookkeeping and putting everything in structures and you know ways that make uh, tracking and keeping your taxes the, the cheapest, right? And the financial advisor is in the business of trying to simplify your investing. So you know, just do a 401k, just do an index fund. Right? And the banker's in the business of loaning you money, so he's going to, yeah, you should do a HELOC loan, get a couple credit cards, right? But none of these people, none of them, know your goals, your plans, what it is you're trying to accomplish. Now, you could try to explain it to them. You could try to explain it to them. You know, but that, that, they, they may not be able to balance that with the legal requirements of their profession because, because they have, because they, like a lawyer's never going to tell you, well, shouldn't say never. Most likely, a lawyer is never going to tell you, um, "Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that," or "You don't need a, you don't need it, like legal protection." Because what if he says, "Nah, you don't need it," and you leave there, and you and something happens, and you did need it. Okay, so whenever whenever experts are given advice, a lot of experts, they also have to cover themselves, and that's fair to them. I mean, I understand that. I'm just trying to get you to see that some of this advice is cloaked inside of one, how they make money, right? A carpenter with a hammer sees a lot of nails, right? How they make money, and also the restrictions within the advice that they can give you. So we want to keep that in mind. Insurance. Your insurance agent's not going to say to you, hey, the product that I'm trying to sell you is stupidly expensive and you don't need it. <laughs> They're never going to do that. You know, if you get one that does that, yeah, you, you might have a good person. They're probably not going to do that. Um, well, we said that with lawyers already. They're probably not going to tell you, hey, you don't need a lawyer. Contractors. These are some of the worst. Now, the bad thing about a contractor is they don't even need a damn license, and they have very little, you know, uh, very little making them be honest. Contractors, sometimes people will assume they're an expert. Call a guy out, give you a quote about remodeling your bathroom. You assume he knows how to remodel a bathroom. You don't know that. He may have never done one. I mean, you could do some due diligence. You could dig into it. You could see what's his reputation. But my point is, sometimes we just assume the guy knows how to paint a house. Or we assume he's going to put the right kind of paint on. There's a difference between satin and flat and semi-gloss, interior, exterior, silicone caulk, different kinds. Like, you get what I'm saying? There's different kinds of stuff. You can easily go and learn this and make sure. I've stopped many contractors dead tracks because of the stuff they were doing is not right. I don't know how to do it, but I know that's not right, right? What? Becoming a self-expert. So um, real estate agents, a lot of friends of mine are real estate agents. I love real estate agents. Real estate agents also a pain in my ass. Real estate agents tend to do this. I and mean, it's nothing, not a slight on them, it's just what it is. This is what they know about real estate, man. It's on paper. So if a real estate agent goes, hey, I want to get some comps, very rarely, I'm not saying in all cases, very rarely do they leave their office and go drive around and look. It's on paper. A lot of landlords are like that. Okay? But that's, that's not the most effective way. There's a lot of problems in the real estate industry. Whenever you bring this up, they get all butthurt. You, you get, uh, 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 you know, agents, it's tied in with insurance. It's tied in with the loan department. It's tied in with the plumbers and the electricians, and it's tied in with the appraisers. So there are places that if you call to get an appraisal because you're buying a property, they don't even go look at your property. It's all on paper. They somehow can appraise your house without even going in it. How's that work? <laughs> so all they're looking at is square foot. They're looking at square footage and what it houses in your area sell for. Now, true enough, that can give you a basic price, but there could be things about your property that make it stand out. 
My point being is you have to fight for that because they're not going to. They're going to do things the way they've always done things. And so if it's your business, your empire, your house, you got to take the lawyer's advice, the CPA's advice, the financial venture, the insurance, the banking, the contractors, the real estate agents, and understand that you are in control. They don't know shit. You know what's best for you, your business, and your empire. So keep that in mind. I don't have to take the advice of a lawyer. Who's he? Fuck's he know? I don't even know if he's a good lawyer. I mean, and so there's nothing wrong with that attitude. Now, I'm not going to say it to him. I'm not saying these things to be rude. I don't go around saying that. Sometimes I think people, when they make, they think I walk around and talk to people the way I do a video. And that's not, that's not what I do, man. I'm a super nice guy. I'm super polite to everyone I meet. But when I'm doing a motivational video or a video where I'm trying to help you and change you, and I'm like, listen up, dummy. Like, I'm trying to grab your attention. I don't walk around talking to people like that, okay? And when you, you know, so these are conversations that I have with myself. So when I meet the lawyer and I reach out to shake his hand, I remind myself, this guy doesn't know shit. What does that remind me of? He may not know. I'm a listen. I'm a politely take it in. I'm paying for the advice. Same thing when I meet with the CPA. Same thing when I listen to a financial advisor. Same thing when I listen to an insurance agent or a banker or a contractor or a real estate agent or a government or what? A guru on Instagram, he probably damn sure don't know anything. And influencers, very few of them know shit. They're just making up shit, right? Go look at some of these real estate influencers you see on Instagram. They don't know a paintbrush from a bucket from a hole in the ground. Most of them have never done an honest damn day's work in their life, man. I don't know how you respect that. I don't know how people respect people that don't work. But, I mean, you know. So it's hard for me to take a guy serious when I don't ever see him work. Like it's hard for me to believe you're an actual expert. If how could you say I'm an I'm an expert about weapons, but you never go to the range and shoot a weapon? Okay, you read about it. All right, you know you can know all about it. There's a there's a there's a here's here's a clear example of this. There's a, you ever watch the show Big Bang? In Big Bang, they're all scientists and they're in the car and they're driving and they're having car problems. And then one scientist says, does anybody know anything about the combustion engine? And they all raise their hand. They know everything about a combustion engine, except how to actually work on it. Right? So keep that in mind when you're talking to experts, especially influencers, myself included, right? Family. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You got family. They got an opinion on everything. It's just that. It's an opinion. So look at where they are and are they where you want to be? And if they're not where you want to be, don't be rude, but you got to, you know, you know, so if you're, let's say your parents, you know, they're good people. They love you. Most time your mom's trying to protect you, right? She's just trying to protect you. They don't want you to get hurt. And they're like, oh, you don't want to buy a rental property, man. People will be calling you in the middle of the night, right? So what you want to say is good. That means I own the place, <laughs> right? That fear that fear they have of someone calling them in the middle of the night or, you know, people bugging them. It, somehow that fear is, 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 is bigger to them than the possibility that they could become rich, become a millionaire. And you can. This is the beautiful thing about real estate allows anybody to become rich. You just need a good credit score, some money to put down and get the ball rolling. Anybody can get rich in America regardless of age, race, or financial situation. If you learn how to communicate and deal with people, all of the money that you want to buy that house is in other people's pockets. So you have to provide them with a talent, a service, an entertainment, something that they want to do business with you. And the more people that you do business with, the more likely you are to be able to buy something. So if you want to increase your income, you raise your hand and you take on more responsibility in this world. You go, hey, I'll do that. Hey, I'll come in early. Hey, I'll stay late. Hey, I'll do that. Which also means not relying on these people. You can't rely on your lawyer to protect you legally. You just don't get your ass in trouble and then you won't need a lawyer. <laughs> so you get what I'm saying? Like, don't rely on a real estate agent to find you a house. Are you crazy? I, I've never had a real estate agent find me a house. I found the houses. I go look for them. I seek them out. I'm not sitting around waiting for someone to email me something. Right? So, finance, I mean, honestly, I've bought almost 20 houses. It never wasn't, did an agent get me the house. I found the house. 
I then called my agent and go, hey, did you see, let's go look at this, okay? Um, I've never had any use whatsoever for a financial advisor. I'm not saying maybe that you do, you you know, I'm sure you could find some advice, I mean, something useful from one of them. I don't, there is no financial advisor on planet Earth that would have set up what I do. None of them would have said, hey, drop out of college, take all that money you have, yeah, pull it out of your thing and start buying real estate, start trying to move, they would never have told me that. So following this advice, I would have never, I would not be worth $3 million right now, retired, like I wouldn't, this, this is not where I would be. Following their advice. Their advice is to keep you working until you're 65 and you're gonna retire with a lot of money. I'm not saying that's bad, I'm just saying if your goal is to become a millionaire, and live an entrepreneur or a business owner's life, this is probably not the person that's gonna help you. You know, maybe some of you disagree with me, but feel free. And, and again, it's because of their, they have, you know. Let's talk about working on properties. If you begin to acquire houses, you're not gonna have these problems with one or two. Sometimes a guy gets one or two, maybe three houses, and you're like, oh, this shit's easy. Yeah, until you start getting a bunch of them, and then four people move out in the same month, two water heaters go out, a roof breaks, and the city pipes on there, and then a tree falls on it, and we have a storm, and all that shit happens in one month. Then real estate doesn't seem as fun. But when you're first doing it, and you buy a house, and you fix it up, and you get in, you know, you're like, this ain't no big deal. And then you do another one. Well, you may not hear from those tenants for a solid year. Nothing may go wrong. But as you begin to multiply your numbers and expand yourself and push yourself into the way, all of a sudden that responsibility gets bigger and bigger and it's very easy in a month to have two or three or four or five things start to break and all of a sudden you may find yourself where now you need contractors you know so I would advise not use them as long as you can probably other people would disagree with me the most problems that I've had with houses have come around using these guys now I've had some good stuff plumbers electricians HVAC so what I try to do is to save calling the contractor for the big stuff I mean, if it's painting a house, man, go paint it. Like, you don't need to pay somebody to paint. But that's the easy shit. That money that you save doing that will allow you to pay the plumber, the electrician, and the HVAC guy, okay? Uh, what else do we talk about? I mean, these are mostly it. And government agents, they don't know jack shit either. Friends don't know anything. Your family doesn't know anything. Most influencers don't know much. Gurus don't know shit. Real estate agents don't know anything. Contractors know very little. Neither do lawyers, lenders, bankers, insurance agents, CPAs, or financial advisors. You say, that's a whole lot of not knowing much. Now, uh, they know what they're doing. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, depending on what your goal is, what you're trying to accomplish, their advice due to legal restraints or due to licensing or whatever may not be the advice for you. So you can't depend on it and you can't be the guy going, oh, well, my accountant said I could X, Y, Z, or my lawyer said blah, blah, blah. No, it's on you. You hired them, you took the advice, and you did what they said. So remember that, the moment, so that's why I have this rule that I just assume you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And if you can convince me, and as I talk to you, and I cross-reference what you said, and I put that inside of the big picture, so my goal may not be to save the most taxes this year. Okay, let me give you an example of this and what I mean by this giant mess that I just made here. Traditional advice, and it's not bad advice, you should start saving for your retirement as soon as possible. You've heard that, right? Everybody says that, of course you should. Isn't that what they say? Okay, well, that's not what I did. It's not what anybody who's been trying to be an entrepreneur would do. So if you're trying to start a business, you know the cash quadrant, right? E, the B, the I, and the, what is it? The E, the B, no, E, S, uh, what is it? E, B, I, and B. E, S, B, and I, right? I got, I'm sure I got it out of order. It's employee, Self-employed is what I do, right? Business owner means you have employees, right? And then investor. And so you want to move from here to here to here is basically what Robert Kiyosaki is trying to say. And But we all need to be investing. And so the common thing is they'll say you should start early because they'll show you the compound curve. And if you've ever watched a compound curve, it's like this, right? 
and then way over here at the end, it shoots up real high. Well, okay, so let's say you're 20 and you drive a truck for Amazon. They're gonna say, man, you should bang that Roth IRA, man. You should start putting as much money in there. Okay, yes, if your plan is to work a job, that's probably a good idea. But what if your plan is to open a pizza restaurant? Like this is your real goal. Not some fucking made up thing. Like this is really what you, I mean, you're clear. You wanna open a restaurant. Well, you putting money into a 401k, what good, how is that getting you any closer to your goal? That's not getting you closer to your goal. That's following the system the world created that financial advisors put out and the human resources at your office told them to put out. That's propaganda. If your goal is to own a successful pizza franchise and you say, well, I don't know if I can. Well, Tom McGonaghan created Pizza Hut and he got rich as fuck doing it. So the guy from there, I mean, there's, I can, there's probably thousands of people became millionaires selling pizza, right? So it's a doable thing. It's not like you're saying, I'm gonna to try to invent Snapchat. Let's say your goal is to, you want to be a real estate investor. Why would you be putting money in a 401k? Why would you be putting money in, a, in any kind of IRA? Like I have a SEP IRA. I have a regular IRA, right? I have my wife has an IRA. You get what I'm saying? But me putting money in my wife's IRA, that's not getting me a house. If that's my goal is to buy a house. And so I'm now listening to someone else's dream, someone else's plan, someone else's strategy, not mine. So you got to get real super clear. And so if you listen to the experts in their field, they're going to tell you, focus on this, focus on the retirement account. They're not going to tell you, put everything behind your dream to open up the pizza restaurant. So again, their advice is not going to get you rich. It isn't. Not until you're a very old man, way down here, and you're like 75 years old, and now you got $3 million or whatever. Okay? That's the advice they're going to give you, man. So if, you're, if your goal is to have a business, you get super clear on it, you push all your money into the business. You don't go get a loan, you fund it yourself. And then once you have all the money in the business, now the business is making money, you push all that to the I, right, investments, and the investments protect the business. But if we go buy some investments first, and so down here, you're, you're buying some, look, $100, $500, $10, $1,000. So you never got the money to start the business. And so you spend your whole life just chunking little bits of money so that one day, way down the road, you can, or you could push this little bit of money you were doing into the business, which accelerates it, makes you, makes you a lot of money. And then you just start throwing big chunks and you retire at 50 or 40. What's your goal, right? You got to get real clear on that. So, Again, do the experts, you know, are they on track with your goal? Because a lot of them, due to rules and laws and licenses, they can't be on board with your goal. 